verse 28. And thou, son of man, prophesy and say, you teach, and this is what you say. Thus saith uh, Adonai Yahweh, Lord God, concerning the Ammonites and concerning their reproach. Even say thou, the sword, the sword is drawn, twice for emphasis, for the slaughter it is furbished, it's sharpened, it glitters, to consume because of the glittering, that I may flash it like lightning, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come. It's going to happen. It is written in the book of Revelation, chapter 12 that from his mouth, as well as the sword, is a flood, a flood of lies, of divination. Do you understand divination? He wrote it. It is written. It will happen that way. Do you know the two ways? Do you know which way he will take? Do you see the hand pointing as God instructed? Make a sign. Our Father is so good to us. There's a great deal in the verse we just completed. Who were the Ammonites? It means the in inbred ones. All right, they were, it was, Ammon was Lot's son by his youngest daughter. And they became a people, but they practiced a certain religion too. Their religion, rather than following God, as it ultimately would, they would come to this, was Moloch practice. You know what Moloch practice is? It's burn their children. Burn, you're going to burn like a piece of bacon. God don't love you. You do that and God's going to cast you into the fire. They put, they put our father in red long handle underwear and with a pitchfork and say, if you do that, God will get you. Biblical illiteracy abounds. Our father said concerning the practice of these Ammonites, it never even entered my mind. You dreamed that up. And quite a difference from what is taught today of join our group or you'll burn in hell forever like a piece of bacon to God's gentle blotting out for he is the consuming fire and he brings about the second death. Get the poor miserable creatures out of their misery. Quite different from the way man's traditions have it. The slaughter will take place. Thanks be to our Father. Inbred into what? Well, they were, they were Adamic peoples. But the spiritual sense is the divination caused them to, if you would, spiritually speaking now, follow me. What is Christ to us? He's the husband, he's the groom, and we're what? The bride. And what would Christ teach in... Mark chapter 13, concerning those that awaited. Woe to those that are with child when I return. And then you pick up on the, in, the, the inbreeding that spiritually they are deceived and beguiled by Satan and his fallen angels into making people believe that he is the Christ and these are his angels with him. They don't know the difference. Therefore, the Ammonites brought in where that you with eyes to see and ears to hear can recognize your father's truth. Verse 29, whilst they see vanity unto thee, see a seer is a prophet. All right. But they see, do you know what vanity is? It's emptiness, nothingness. You can't, there's not an English word I can say that really does it like the Hebrew word does. It's about as much of nothing as you can get. They don't see nothing unto thee. Whilst they divine a lie unto thee to bring thee up on the necks of them that are slain of the wicked whose day is come. 
when their iniquity shall have an end. In other words, God said judgment is coming, and I intend to put a stop to it. God himself, remember in a chapter or so hence, he said, I'm going to allow a false teacher to come to you. If you love hearing that stuff, I'm going to send you plenty of them. And how people slurp it up. Well, how do I avoid that if I'm not that much of a Bible student? All you got to do is check them out in God's Word. And if what they teach does not align with God's Word, I mean, you make the choice, friend. There are two roads. You take the one you're comfortable with. Uh, and I will never, uh, other than letting you know that the pointer is there, I won't say anything else to you about it. Have a good trip. Verse 30. Shall I cause it to return unto his sheath? Talking about the lies of Satan, the lies of the king of Babylon. Shall I have him put them away? I will judge thee in the place where thou wast created, in the land of thy nativity. Again, you're not going to understand that. Who is, what? Who, who is he talking to here? I told you in the beginning, he's talking to a city. Do you, have you forgotten chapter 16 already? Where he said to this city, you were born of an unclean birth in the blood. The city that we're talking to here was called Jebus at that time, and it was founded by the Jebusites. And it was a filthy, abominable, heathenistic, idol worship place. God said, I saw you, and, as, and he likens it to a young female's body. I watched you grow to maturity. And as you matured, I put my skirt over you, which means I took you to wife. In other words, he's saying here, um, the place of the nativity is where? Do you want to know where it's going to happen? Not Rome, not New York, not San Francisco, not some other place. Jerusalem. Why? Because that is where the king of Babylon will sit. That's where the finger points, my friend. Hey, pick whichever way you want. Again, have a good trip. But it will happen. In this self-same place, and if you have forgotten, read the 16th chapter again and rightly divide the word and understand that it is a city that's being addressed as with this chapter. He said, right in your place of nativity where you were created, meaning the city of Jerusalem, verse 31, and I will pour out mine indignation upon thee. I will blow against thee in the fire of my wrath and deliver thee into the hand of brutish men, Kenites, those Nephilim that Satan brings with him, the one he told the woman, keep the veil, Paul in, in 1 Corinthians 11, keep a veil over your head because of the angels. They're coming, my friend, and skillful to destroy. The destroyer is a babdon in the Hebrew tongue and a polyon in the Greek tongue as it is reported in Revelation chapter 9, verse 32. Thou shalt be for fuel to the fire. Thy blood shall be in the midst of the land. Thou shalt be no more remembered, for I the Lord have spoken it. In other words, God is saying you will suffer for your conduct. Why? What's going to happen? Jesus said it very well. If you'll remember Mark 13, Matthew 24, when he was told, Oh, Lord, look at these beautiful buildings in this place. He said, There's not going to be one stone left standing atop another. And that's, that even gets down to pebble size, friend. It's going to be turned to sand, whereby New Jerusalem will be built there. Same geographical location but all of the old shall be destroyed when God himself will return as it is written in the 21st chapter of Revelation. These things were spoken by our Father concerning this geographical location. This is where the king of Babylon shall appear this is where the event spoken of concerning God's people 
meaning Zedekiah and the three daughters and the overturning and the return. It is the barometer of the age. Watch it and watch it closely. God's favorite spot. Does he love it? You bet. Chapter 22. 